Looks like there's a couple of drop tines and, and some junk. I might just go after this guy. in this country. That was a hike and a half, boy. After another season of guiding in the mountains, I could not wait to get home to experience a hunt for myself. And luckily, this year along with fellow guides Scott Kergreshner and Dave and Les Archer, we had all drawn coveted mule deer tags for our home province of Saskatchewan. And we wasted little time that first afternoon as Dave and I found a good vantage point and right off the bat we spotted this guy. And all I can tell you is that Dave passed him up this first evening but as you'll see in an upcoming episode or two, we had more than one run in with this buck. That first evening, it just seemed like in every direction we turned, mature bucks were filtering out of the woodwork everywhere, including this four by three whose exceptional mass almost got him into trouble. But luckily for him, as the sun was setting, we had finally found what we had been looking for. Yeah, we're gonna have to act really quick, maybe, hey? Doesn't have mass. No. I don't think he can pass him up, though. He's 200. What happened, Dale? Well, maybe got too anxious, but uh, came close. <laughs> Good deer, huh? Really nice. Lots of points. I don't know, 20 or so. But, uh, <laughs> I don't know, we had a bunch of stickers. But anyway, something spooked him. I don't think it was us, but we were about 50 yards from getting the job done. Maybe a little less than that. We could have tried to hold tight and hold for the best, but I think it would have screwed us up. 
So anyway, that's him standing on the hill laughing at us right now. But he's not that spooked, so he might run into us again. Got lots of nice stuff. Well, like you said, let's run back to the scopes and yeah. see what we see the last few minutes. Okay. Sounds like we got some other hunters spooked in this country. Maybe that's what spooked us out of that deer. Oh well, we got tomorrow morning and the next one. The Canadian Guide Life with Brad Fry is brought to you by Monarch Images, trail cameras that capture the action. Fort Muzzle Shell Outfitters, Montana's finest big game hunts. Buddy Ramp, the safe way to get loaded. Big Buck Magazine, Canada's number one deer hunting publication. And by Fry's Canadian Outback Outfitters. Back out in the same sort of country here this morning where we thought we might be able to glass him early where we might have been feeding. Anyway, turned out he was out here. Brad spotted him, oh, I don't know, three quarters of a mile away probably. So we watched him feed, kind of got a line where he was going. Repositioned, tried to get in front of him. Thought we did really good, but they, uh, they ended up moving a little quicker than we were thinking. So. Anyway, I think he's back bedded down up in behind us. We're going to pull out of here, but we got sidetracked here. There's six bull elk feeding down below us and bull moose over the ridge here about an hour ago. So we're having lots of fun. Now, I think I forgot to mention, but both Dave and Les had drawn antelope tags for the same area. So after we got finished up with our morning muley hunt, we hit the open prairie and as usual, Lester didn't mess around, dropping his first ever antelope right off the bat. It's Lester's goat. Shortly after that, we bumped into yet another small group, so we circled downwind and out of sight the best we could, and Dave's hunt was on. After taking care of both antelope back at camp, we quickly gathered our gear and hit the muley hills for the last few hours of light. Okay, Scotty's got a buck bedded at about 300 yards. We saw him, so we're gonna go over. He's waving to us to come and give him a hand, so we're gonna try and get in on this buck and see what happens. Okay, we just uh, saw Scotty and he's waving to us to come in from the northeast of him, so we're gonna tiptoe in there. And must still be bedded, so this could work out good. I got him bedded right now, and I got the boys backing me up. So we're gonna try and see if we can uh, can get him or not. We'll see. He's bedded right in front of me, about 300 yards, and he hasn't moved a stitch since I got here. I got to go through a bit of a dip to get to them, so I'm going to lose sight of them for a bit. I'm going to hopefully get into about 100 yards on them. And uh, if I do, hopefully I can make the shot. If I can't or something happens, I got Dave backing me up here. So we'll uh, maybe have to do a tag team. We'll see how it goes, but <laughs> they like to burn and we got to get going. Let's do her.
got to about 60, 70 yards and got a shot at him in his bed. He hopped up and went about 30. So here he is. After finishing up with Scott's buck, Dave and I headed to the closest lookout we could find and we had just turned around to see Scott working his way back to camp on the far horizon when right in between us was this buck here moving in on us fast. We had no clue we were there so we had plenty of time to get a good look at him and his left side was awesome. He had great mass and good height, a couple of stickers with one real good handlebar kicker coming off his top wide. Unfortunately, his right side was like a totally different deer, just a lot weaker, no mass or stickers, and all of his forks were shallow. So Dave decided to let him walk in hopes of finding the big non-typical from the day before, and as it turns out, we did find the big guy one more time. Unfortunately, he proved to be just a little bit smarter than us, and he lived to see another day. Drop line on this side. It's time now for another blast from the past. Here's Brad with today's vintage video. Let's head up now to some of my favorite country in the world, Ram Country. On this hunt, my hunter and I had just tagged out a few days earlier, so I grabbed my camera and joined up with good friend and fellow guide, Curtis Valley, as we tried to track down another big old stone ram from Northern British Columbia. Now, when you're a sheep guide, you get to leave home for months at a time, pound your body day after day, climbing mountains, chasing horses, sleeping in the rocks, and getting chewed on by the ever-present bugs. But when you finally get into position on a classic old ram, well, I gotta tell ya, it doesn't take long and you forget all the pain. Now, some of you may be wondering why I was able to follow Dave and Scott around with the camera when I still had a perfectly good tag of my own burning a hole in my pocket. Well, I'm here to tell you that I always try and bring along plenty of lucky horseshoes and on this hunt I brought along a truckload only a few days earlier. got set up for the evening sit on the knob and a few does and some fawns started moving and looked over and there's what looked like a doe sitting in the bush and I told Dennis there's either a doe there or, or an old buck with a real tall narrow rack. Just as I said that he turned his head and looks like there's a couple drop tines and some junk and so uh, we might, uh, might just go after this guy. We gotta get a look at him again. And hopefully he doesn't spot us. We're kind of in the open here but Looks good. Okay, last night we uh, got on that non typical with a couple drop tines. And we basically ran out of light and some does blocked us. We got about 260 from him and uh, there's about five does that were in between him and us. And 
we just ran out of light and had to back out of there. We didn't want to spook them, so backed out of there, came out this morning, and it was raining and pretty blustery. Looked like everything was going back to bed pretty early, but we may have seen him sneaking back into the same hole he came out of last night. We're not sure, so we decided to back out again, come back tonight. It's looking like it's dried up a little bit, so we're going to go back to the lookout that we found him from last night and see if we can find him again. Surprisingly, we spotted him again, almost in the exact same spot as the day before. And now, all we had to do was tiptoe through the hills and work our way past all the other muleys and hopefully locate him again and make our final stop. We got him. Didn't range him, but I think he's about 200. Put it right on top of his back and smacked him. Something dropped, anyways. Let's go. On. <laughs> Put her there, bud. He's a beauty. He's uh, I never dared dream this big. He's an old, gnarly, goofy looking character. Wow.
next week on the Canadian Guide Life. Next week, it's the Dennis Stave Show. Over the past decade or so, I've had the good fortune to guide Dennis on many hunts up here in Canada. And next week, we're going to have a look at a few of these successful hunts we've caught on camera. So, if you like bow hunting and you like big critters, then this show is for you.